Understanding the tracks or anatomical pathways is one of the major parts of any medically orientated neuroanatomy course. Here we present an overview of all the major ascending and descending tracks that you need to know about, including a brief description of their functions. First, on the left hand side of this table, we have motor tracks that go from the cerebral cortex in the brain to innervate muscles in the body and trunk. The corticospinal tract, as it's known, is for voluntary movement and is often called the pyramidal tract, as I've labelled it here. The reason for this is that the majority of its fibres cross over in a region of the brainstem called the medulla oblongata, and this region is called the pyramids. The extra pyramidal tracts, of which there are a few, do not originate from the cerebral cortex, therefore these are not voluntary. Neither do they pass through the pyramids in the medulla oblongata. They assist with non-conscious activities such as balance, posture, controlling muscle tone, and reflexes. Each motor tract consists of an upper motor neuron and a lower motor neuron. The cell body of the upper motor neuron is in the cerebral cortex and its axons synapse onto the cell body of the lower motor neuron which has its cell body in the spinal cord. The axons belonging to the lower motor neuron leave the spinal cord to enter the periphery and innervate muscles. The sensory tracts in the next column along are ascending tracts and these carry sensory signals from special receptors in the trunk and limbs towards the brain, specifically again the cerebral cortex. This is where the information is eventually processed. Spinothalamic and dorsal column pathways both have three neurons in a sequence and they cross somewhere either in the spinal cord or in the brain itself. The spinocerebellar pathway only has two neurons in the sequence and its fibres do not cross. The spinothalamic tract carries information concerning general touch, pain, temperature and pressure. The full name of the dorsal column pathway is in fact the dorsal column medial liminiscal pathway. It carries discriminatory touch, being able to tell the feeling of two objects apart, and something known as proprioceptive information. This is joint position sense and allows you to know where your limbs are in space without having to look. The spinocerebellar tract carries proprioceptive information too, but this is not consciously controlled and as its name suggests, it's going to the cerebellum and not to the cerebral cortex. The next group of pathways are in the far right column and are grouped together as sensory and motor. These are not associated with the trunk and limbs, instead they are associated with the head, neck and face. Both motor and sensory information going to or coming from the head, neck and face go, uh, go via cranial nerves. The voluntary motor pathway in the head and neck is called the corticobulbar tract and it crosses over. The sensory pathway, which carries all the different types of sensory information that I mentioned before, goes via a tract abbreviated here as the TTT. This actually stands for the trigeminothalamic tract. And as you can probably guess, the main cranial nerve associated with this tract is the trigeminal nerve. The tract crosses over in the brainstem. The last two tracks are often not considered, but I will include them here for completion and also because I believe that they are both clinically important. The first one is called the MLF and is short for the medial longitudinal fasciculus. It is mainly involved in the synchronised movement of the eyes, allowing you to follow objects or for reading. The second of these pathways is called the DLF and this stands for the dorsal longitudinal fasciculus and is the descending fibres coming from the hypothalamus that's associated with the sympathetic nervous system. Subscribe to Sultan Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.